So what you were alluding to, Zach, was how our faith is informing political choices that we make. And maybe that, that comes down to like, hey, if if you were a, a voting human in the US or in the world, does that does that play some role in whatever you the person that you put your check mark next to? Right. On uh on voting day, election it, day. Is Greg an example of where it's flipped? Where his politics are informing the way his faith is exercised. And this other Yes. Yep. This other quote a uh, short quote uh, from an article on ncbaptist.org, which I think is North Carolina. So the quote I read before from the pastor from Restoration City, this that quote floored this writer, Mac Johnson, which sounds like if you're playing Madden and you draft a player, it sounds like a made-up player you would draft in yeah, Madden, yeah. Mac Johnson. Also, a, probably a fourth rounder. Good, yeah, yeah, fourth rounder, yeah. but he's a hustler. He's a hard worker. He's also on the side. He's a white rapper. Yes. Oh, okay. Yes. Mac, yeah, I like Johnson. That. Yes. Mac Johnson yeah. is clearly a white rapper, yeah. which is why he went fourth. Yeah, that's right. Round, but yeah. you know, because <laughs> he's not good at anything. Yeah. But he wor- Mac works real hard. He's yeah. gonna yeah. hustle. He's, he's a got hustler. A, he's a hustler. Yeah. He's got yeah. a high yeah. motor. Yeah, he's a Kurt Rambis. Yeah. Whatever yeah. Is. Yeah. Yeah. I love the racial stereotypes yeah. in, in sports. Like high motor is always a white dude yeah. that's yeah. just yeah. like barely there. Yeah. Oh yeah, Dan Marley. <laughs> Dan Marley from the. He had a jump shot though. He did have. But he also had a high motor. Yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, this and so this guy Mac Johnson uh, worked in D.C. He worked for a congressional person. I don't remember who, but he said working in the political bubble, I consume media coverage daily. Regularly checked the latest polling data and intently watched the candidates spar back and forth. Politics became the idol of my life. This idol was designed to distract me from my calling of fulfilling the Great Commission. And the great commandment, loving God and others, the idol of politics deceived me into mm-hmm. thinking that my neighbors, those who thought differently than me, needed to be conquered and persuaded rather than loved and served. So when I heard my pastor speak on the election of 2016, my eyes were open and I realized that I had allowed my politics to influence my faith instead of the other way around. Yep. That's a good quote. Good reflection. Looking back. I'm- yeah. And, and I think... Uh, Actually, we we have one more, one more clip that's sort of it's the softer, gentler version of that, and it's from an old, familiar friend that we've played on the podcast. If you uh, hit escape <laughs> and go to the other tab, oh man, the he other, <laughs> there you go. Is you not my constituents? This is Charlie Kirk at the local uh, Calvary Capo Beach. I feel like I would be really, I'd be tired after a Sunday service, just like ah. Oh. I got, yeah. I got yeah. verbally beat up. Okay. No, if you vote Democrat as a Christian, I think you can you can no longer call yourself a Christian. You have to call yourself something else. I do not think you could be a Christian and vote Democrat. Okay, okay that's it. You can pause it. That was the calm version of. It's the what kinder, he said. gentler version. Yes. Now, yes. I don't think Charlie Kirk would agree with Greg Locke's style. Um, like, get out of here. But it's a similar sentiment. And my question is. Do we not just take a cursory look at the disciples and it just blows this out of the water? It blows this to the hell that Greg Locke wants to send everyone to. Timbuktu. Um, you got, um, Simon, was it Simon the Zealot? I had, I should have written this down. Matthew, the tax, we got the tax collector. So you got the Zealot among others, but a zealot in those days would have wanted to overthrow Rome violently if necessary. And they were the Antifa of Jesus time. Correct. Yeah. No. Or now maybe like I'm w- kidding. with right now, the Biden administration think somebody that is hyper like militia MAGA. And I, I don't lump all people who vote for Trump together. Just want to say that I'm right here, Zach. I know. <laughs> What I love about this conversation is we got people in this room that voted for Obama and Trump, the same yep. person. Yep. Was it the grandma who's in prison from January 6th? Or, <laughs> yes. or the one. <laughs> what, what, what was that her? Grandma the Zealot. Grandma the Zealot. Yeah, uh, I did I did go from, yes, we can. Yes, we can. Let's make this America great again. <laughs> <laughs> but but I, I, 
I don't think it holds any water. The you got a zealot that wants to overthrow the government, following this guy Jesus, and you have a tax collector that is collecting taxes on behalf of Rome from the Jewish people and keeping a cut. And they're in the same making that money retinue, following this guy. Je- yeah, Jesus was yeah. that compelling. By the way, I want to be. If you get to go to heaven and watch playback tapes of things, I want to have. I want when they're on the wine, they're on the sauce, and they're getting into political fights because I promise you that happened. I want to be there and see how that was like. But yet they were still united behind this guy, and even then they were wrong because they they still thought he was going to overthrow Rome. They didn't get his full purpose, but yet they were together. And I don't know how you can hold the view of one party or another or can't follow Jesus definitionally. Your guys' thoughts? I think just one point that stood out to me when you were saying that in regards to following one person, in this case was Jesus. United States, if you think about it, it used to be you're you're fighting for one country Mm. regardless of your beliefs, right? Mm -hmm. The Declaration of Independence was derived on uh, basically checks and balances, right? Yeah. Which is why it's good to have a a, a, a diverse thought of thinking, yes. not color, thinking yeah. for you to do that. So as we progress historically, we lost that side of one United States, right? So you once you lose that, it's like, what are you fighting for? Yeah. You have a true division there, right? Across the board. Then you throw in the other stuff, the color, whatever your thought process is. Now your division is like, we don't have anything common to fight about. Yeah, which is why we should start a war. All right. Yeah. That's, <laughs> yes. I like guns. I like, yeah. So it's, I think that's that's really, if you think about it, I mean, that's it's taken out of schools, right? You, you don't talk about that much. You don't pray about it much. Oh, like a like a cult. There's it's not in the culture like it was it's where not, it's like it's this is what this country is about. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, so there's not. We're not fighting in the same direction, right? Trying to balance the system as we grow yeah. and progress. We're fighting in two different directions, and we're. We're seeing the, the decay of that in There's, any direction. We're not meeting you, in the middle on anything. Yes. Yeah. Politically, written on paper. If you talk to people down the street, they'll probably agree with you nine out of ten times. Yeah. Right. But legislation rise, it's just it's night and day different. Like yeah. it's way different. As you describe that, I wonder <clears throat> at some point, I don't I don't know uh, which decade it started happening, but the shift towards um, recognizing the individual versus your connection as a whole. So individualism became like the new hierarchy and the new thing to strive for. Ooh, this yeah. is good. Right? And so if we if we highlight the individual, then by nature, it's like the reverse of what's on the back of all of our coins, e pluribus unum, which is from from many one. Yes. Yes. Right. Which is which is in some ways like the opposite of individualism is like, hey, we we all came from different places. Yep. But the goal was to to connect and be one people all together um that i think that has penetrated most of our culture yeah in in every facet if you think about it i mean that's i always think about where did it how did this unveil like how did this start right i know how it started yeah you, you, with apple <laughs> they called it the i pod oh. the i not the us pod, oh. <laughs> not the, the us the pod. I. It's I. It's me. <clears throat> yeah, I got my 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 so email addresses saying... at me dot com. Oh my gosh, that's perfect. Yeah. Um, but so you're saying you want the commie phone? Is that what you're saying? Like... Uh, is that another word for Android? <laughs> <laughs> Hey, yes. Hey, listener, make sure you get a bunch of Android phones because it pays my paycheck. Okay, keep going now. <laughs> but then don't because nobody likes seeing your green tech no, green gross, text box. Gross green text box. So, I mean, I don't, I don't have one, but you should have one. <laughs> there's, there's definitely something to the iPhone technology as we've gotten greater technology, better technology, and become more efficient. We've become less connected, and, and we've just hey we're on our own the garage is closed and even within families you know garage is probably, closed. Look at a, probably look at a lot of families in their homes and <clears throat> you know people are on phones i'm guilty of that and we have we have lost neighborhoods we've lost community because homes we're, we're within just, the home yeah it's a it's a terrible thing to to realize this this has happened it 
it's hard to get out of. I don't know if we can get out of it. Um, yes, we can. I mean, ultimately. <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's make it great again. It starts here on this podcast, people. Right. And you brought this up, Zach. Uh, we and probably you, Andy. It's like you have the ability to do this. Yeah. You do it. It's like and and you can't do anything other than that. It's not like you can go around like talking people into believing in Jesus. Same thing. You can like, hey, put your phone down. Like, let's have a conversation. Maybe it's, easier to talk people into believing Jesus than to put your phone down. <laughs> Amen to that. Yeah. I completely agree. Which that's, is why there's that's all a valid point. Yeah. There's all, Maybe. <laughs> there's all yeah. these prayer apps and stuff. Like Mike Mark Wahlberg is yeah. I don't remember. Is his abide or I don't know. I don't remember what his is. I don't know. He's not a sponsor of this podcast. No, he's he not. doesn't get free advertising. Stop talking. But there's tons of prayer apps now and stuff like that. Like this is what I'm saying. It's like you there, believe in Mark Wahlberg, you're off this podcast. There's le- he's, he's a, a person. He's Democrat. He's a, he's a good. He's a good Catholic. No, no he is. Um, this is the Greg Locke of podcast. Um, but it goes to the point. Like when there's a market for right now, there's a market. There's a renaissance of like Christian content with the chosen and all that. As I mentioned earlier, um, it money talks is what it comes down to. I think there's just like ACDC. There said. can be Christian persecution, and sometimes there is in this country, but it's mostly of the first world variety, the champagne problem. It's it's here less, it is he, in this country. Yeah, that's what I said. Thank you. <laughs> Just make it sure. Okay. We have an abide. There are here? there happening? are some real persecu- There's real persecutions and stuff, and maybe we can solve that problem on a future episode. This podcast knows no ends. We can solve. We can do all things yeah. through bourbon who strengthens us. <laughs> um, with a little bit of Jesus, but. Uh, I saw the best Christian memes during Easter. <laughs> oh, no, do tell, Andy. <laughs> you know that one where Mo, you know that one where Mo is kicking Barney out of the uh, bar and then the next scene is Bar is Barney coming in right behind him and, and the bar. Yeah, that was like death, resurrection. Oh, nice. <laughs> Jesus coming nice. Back. That's good. Yeah, that was my favorite. Yeah. Okay. I do feel like the, the the right side of the aisle in general seems to be a little bit better at memeing. But, oh, yeah. yeah Which but. is weird. I feel like there's a... Yeah, the, hey, how the turntables have turned. Andy, will you get me another Paloma down there? Uh, I can take care oh, of you, my friend. You. And I, I want to come... While he's doing that, I do want to come back to our conversation here. And that is... And we've talked about this before. It's when you have that one-on-one conversation with somebody... Democrat, Republican, doesn't matter. But when you make that connection, you know, it's a, it's a difference maker. That's good. Because you pick up on the shared human values. Right. You could be even talking to somebody who they just had an abortion. That's right. You just yeah. Dilute, yeah. What you, dilute what you believe. <laughs> and <laughs> But instead of, instead of kicking them out of your church. Yeah. You have a conversation with them, a heartfelt conversation, connect with that person, be the hands and feet of Jesus and change, not like what happened, but like you're still here on planet earth with us and we're having a conversation. You're real, I'm real. And like just to pass that, like, I'll listen to you, like quick to listen. Like, I want to, I want to tell me the story. How did this, how did this happen? How, what did you go through? Why did you make this decision? Is everything okay? Are you okay? And like, that changes things. That is Jesus at work. But I, I think when you have pastors yelling from the pulpit, like if you're a Democrat, you're out of here, just leave the church. I'm like, what are you doing? You're ruined. You're, you're creating the martyr or just something that yeah. someone can point at and say the boogie that's man. what's that's what's wrong with christians right there that's what's wrong with conservative republican christians right there look at that pastor and it's like dude Abieka. thank you very much